Last deep dive will be the Grade 1 Metropolitan Handicap, a one-turn mile, and this was the race of all races, I think, of Belmont Stakes weekend. Quality top to bottom, a field of nine, could have made a case for probably seven, maybe, depending on who you were talking to. I would say anywhere between six and seven seemed reasonable. Uh, if you really wanted to get creative, maybe you could have said all nine of them, but uh, it felt like this was a really tremendous race signed on, and we got tremendous performances, I think, really I think the big boys all delivered for the most part in this race. Taking a look at the field, McKinsey was taking the money early on. He was the horse that ended up being the post-time favorite at odds of 8-5. to five. You had some other ways you could have gone, though. You could have gone with Matoli. You could have gone with Thundersnow, uh, Firenze Fire. And then if you wanted to get real creative, and you know what? Some of these horses that were 10, 12, 15 to 1, they weren't completely overmatched on paper, whether it was a Prince Lucky or a Cole Front or a Promises Fulfilled, any of those types. This was a really good group, a really good group, and a really good race. Um, and I think it could just be a sort of a, a, let's call it an appetizer. It might be something that you look back on and say, "Oh, this was the beginning of these horses all kind of tying into one another and, and facing off in different spots." Um, but let's just let the tape do the talking. Here we go. Metropolitan handicap stretch run. Matoli promises fulfilled. Cold front cuts the corner. Thunder snow moves between horses. Firenze fire is there. McKenzie has no place to go. He's in traffic with a furlong to run. And Matoli to catch. Here's Thunder snow coming through an opening on the inside. McKenzie with a late path, but it's Matoli. He did it again. Matoli wins the run. Matoli wins the Met Mile. At odds of seven to two over McKinsey at odds of eight to five and Thundersnow rounds out your trifecta at odds of five to one. Let's talk about the winner Matoli. Uh, boy, is he a racehorse. Never added the money in 11 lifetime starts. Eight times a winner. Over $1.6 million in career earnings owned by William and Corrine uh, Heligbrot. I apologize if I mispronounced the last name. Uh, trained by Steve Asmussen. Bred by Edward A. Cox Jr. in Kentucky. Ridden to victory by Ricardo Santana Jr. You can see the pedigree at the bottom of the horse card. He's by Escandrea out of an Indian Charlie mare named Indian Miss. Uh, this is back-to-back -back years for Asmussen and Ricardo Santana teaming up to win the Met Mile. They won with B Jersey last year. Uh, Matoli earns a 108 buyer and a 132 pace adjusted. Time form U.S. rating 131, pace unadjusted. Uh, this was a tremendous performance from this horse. I love everything about him at this point where he can sit off of a target. He can go to the lead. He's a grade one caliber runner between six and eight furlongs. You don't see that very often. He can, he can go wherever. Shipping doesn't matter. Track doesn't matter. He'll run wherever. Um, there's no knocks for this horse. Uh, I just, there, there really is. There's nothing to knock about him in a spot like this. All he does is go out there and run his eyeballs out. He's a tremendous horse. And it's a great job by Steve Asmussen. Uh, McKinsey. There's some differing opinions about his trip and how significant the trip itself was. Um, the obvious piece I think most people will look at, rounding the far turn, turning for home, uh, trying to find a, a path, trying to find somewhere to weave in between horses, eventually gets down to the inside, explodes home at the end. Uh, to me, the trip was as much about the beginning as it was all of that sort of, you know, I don't want to say traffic, but traffic. Um, early on, I would have liked him to have been ridden more like Christoph Sumi on Road Thundersnow, where you know they're going to go honest enough up front, but you've got a horse that's not, look, he, he's not a complete, you know, he's not a bum as far as early speed is concerned. I'm not saying he's a burner, but I didn't think he would be second to last. Now, he was down on the inside where you wanted to be, down the backside and into the far turn. But if he had gotten into the run a little bit earlier, I wonder if, you know, we'll never know. But if he could have ended up having a position similar to what Thundersnow had, or if he was occupying that position as opposed to Thundersnow, this is kind of a moot point, isn't it? He's able to get through, and I'm gonna. I would say if he's able to get clear earlier, I think he probably wins the race. Uh, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Matoli, but the way that this horse kicked on at the end, I would like to think if he had gotten clear earlier, he would have gone on and done it. Um, I'm very concerned. I, I've said it a number of times about him going longer. Uh, I think as the races get longer, I think he gets slightly less effective, and slightly less could be a tremendous gap as some of these other horses get ready and get tighter because they're going to prevail and do better as the distances get longer. Where McKinsey, I don't know that that's the case. I think he is well within himself at nine furlongs. Past nine, I think you're getting into some deep waters. And I think some of the horses that are better off at the longer distances, the talent gap is not giant at that point. 
And I, I think that could end up being a little bit of a bugaboo for him. Uh, but these eight and a half, nine furlong races, I could see him being a major threat in a race like the Whitney. Horse that I love for the Whitney. I, w- I, I hope I had uh, voiced my opinion well enough in the preview pod. We went over the Met Mile in, in the stakes preview. I didn't think a flat mile off of a three-month layoff or whatever it is between the Dubai World Cup and the Met Mile was going to work for Thundersnow. I figured he was going to get pace that he had never seen before. This this race is just too sharp for him as far as distance is concerned. And this is going to be a beautiful tightener. If they if he comes with a little bit of a run, get him ready for the Whitney at Saratoga, longer distances. And I think he's going to be a major threat going forward. I, I said he was one of the most disrespected horses we've seen in the past handful of years. This I, This wildly exceeded my expectations. This was a phenomenal effort to me. He was down on the rail, yes, where you wanted to be on the racetrack. Can't take that away from him. Still a little bit goofy with his leads, but this is just still a racehorse that he he ran that well against these horses at eight furlongs. He's only going to get better as the distances get longer. And you can't say that about all of them. I To me, I think he's going to be an absolute... If I had to make a pick right now, I would pick him absolutely... For the Whitney, I would, and I know again before you come back with all the sort of feedback, you don't know what the race looks like. But I, I get it. Just work with me here. I think he is that caliber. I think he could a- absolutely win the Whitney. I think he could win the Jockey Club Gold Cup, and I think he has to be viewed on the short list right now. Granted, we are five months out uh, on the short list of, of threats for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Only other one we'll touch on is Forenze Fire. Uh, in and amongst horses rounding the far turn, loomed up on the outside. Yes, he was five paths off the rail. Um, that, to me, sure, not where you wanted to be, but I don't think that's why he didn't run with them. I, I Maybe this was the race that sort of exposed him as not quite that level. He might still be able to win big races. I'm not saying he can't win a grade one uh, in a different spot. At this level with these types, uh, these are the best of the best. And maybe he's just a notch below them. He is an A while these others are A-pluses, or he's an A-minus while everyone else is an A. I don't want to say everyone else, while these top two, two or three are A's. Uh, Forensic Fire is still a really nice horse. I just wonder if this was the race that sort of proved that, you know what, maybe he's not actually quite to that level. Maybe he's an A-minus when everybody else is A's. Um, but a giant effort from Matoli. This was a real, he's, a, he's just a monster. He's a proper monster. He goes out there, uh, again, speed. If there's no pace, he goes to the front. If there's pace, he sits just off. He goes six furlongs, seven furlongs, eight furlongs. Doesn't matter. Wet track, dry track, he's got it. Uh, Matoli, Steve Asmussen, Ricardo Santana Jr., another grade one here. He gets the job done in the Met Mile. Boy, McKinsey and Thundersnow, bigger and better things coming forward for them as well. Uh, This is a really nice group of horses that ran in the Met this year.